So I went to the theater knowing that Shazam was going to be good, and I really hoped it would be great. And Warner Bros. basically made my dreams come true with this movie. Shazam is everything I've ever wanted in a superhero movie. It's funny. It's heartfelt. It's a love letter to superheroes. Shazam is by all means the best DC movie ever made. I had no idea how many emotions I could feel while watching one movie. The movie seamlessly changed from one emotion to the next. One minute I was laughing at something Freddy said, and the next I was tearing up because Freddy and Billy were arguing. I mean, at some point, about halfway through the movie, I stopped analyzing and started really enjoying the movie. That's a feeling I haven't experienced since Infinity War. It's rare a movie makes me stop analyzing and just lets me enjoy. I think the reason I really enjoyed Shazam was because it wasn't really a superhero movie. It was a movie about family with some superhero aspects. And if we really wanted to hone in, it's a story about two brothers, both seeking acceptance, and how these brothers find acceptance in each other is what the story is about. I mean, hands down, my favorite character was Freddie Freeman. He was goofy and extremely likable. And really, he was the one who made Billy into Shazam. If you think about it, if Freddie hadn't gotten into a fight with Billy, then Shazam would have still been doing shows on the streets for money. Freddie is the heart of the movie. He makes Billy a better person, and he is Billy's bond to his foster family. So really what I'm getting at is that without Freddy, Billy would still be on the streets looking for a mother who doesn't want him. But because Freddy accepts Billy and probably views him as his best friend, Billy doesn't want to run away again. I mean, this point is proven in the movie when Freddy and Billy get into a fight and Billy finds where his real mother is. He runs away because Freddy is mad at him. And really, Freddy was Billy's only real friend. But when Billy comes back from his real mother's house, he and Freddy make up and Billy becomes a more powerful hero as a result. Because of this, while I was watching the movie, I kept wondering why the wizard didn't choose Freddy. Someone who was definitely more pure of heart than Billy. And he probably knows how to be a much better hero than Billy. Which might be a flaw in the movie, but in my eyes, it's the point. Because Billy is pure of heart deep down. He just needs someone, Freddy, to bring out the best in him. To be honest, I might be a little biased towards liking Freddy because he is my favorite Shazam character. But I mean, there have been movies about some of my other favorite characters, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, that I really hated. So good on the writers creating such a comic accurate and likable Freddie Freeman. One reason I want to sing praises for this movie is because it does a lot of show not tell. In the first act of the movie, Billy Batson barely says anything, and yet we learn everything we need to know through the amazing acting from Asher Angel, who you might know from Andy Mack on Disney Channel. We learn that Billy has been on the run from multiple foster homes, He's looking for his birth mother, and he's a bit of a troublemaker. That is the basics of what we need to know. And even when exposition must be dumped, it's done in a humorous comic book fashion. Shazam also feels like a pre-MCU slash DCEU movie, because it doesn't feel like it needs to be connected to the bigger universe or set up the next DC movie. Does it make reference to the bigger DCEU? Yes, but it never feels like it has to. The larger universe doesn't play a crucial role in the movie. No Tesseract or Mother Boxes or reference to Steppenwolf. I mean, it feels like its own movie. No need for attachment. Shazam was always such an odd character. A 15-year-old boy who turns into Superman when he says Shazam? How the hell did Bill Parker come up with that concept? Anyway, Shazam to me is almost unsellable unless he's written by Jeff Johns. But somehow, the writers managed to write an interesting and likable version of Shazam without Jeff Johns. Every character is super likable, with the exception of Pablo and Eugene. No offense to them, I liked them, but they really didn't get much character development, and they rarely do anything in any of their appearances in any form of media. I also wanted to mention the amazing adult actors. I mean, I knew that Zachary Levi was going to be a great Captain Marvel, but I didn't know about the other adult actors, but I was pleasantly surprised by most of them. Mary's adult counterpart didn't have many lines, and Pablo and Eugene weren't exactly the best characters to begin with, but I was very happy with Freddie Freeman's adult counterpart, otherwise known as Captain Marvel Jr. And adult Darla was really well done. There wasn't a moment where I didn't think that Megan Good, the actress who played adult Darla, was a nine-year-old girl inside of an adult body. But let's hone back in on Zachary Levi as Shazam. He was amazing. I mean, he was funny, he pulled off emotional scenes really well, and he carried the constantly changing tone with his great acting. His performance is so full of youthful energy and emotional sincerity. It's just all around great. When Billy constantly switches from his kid self to his adult self, I never doubted for a second that they weren't the same person. And good on them for getting that right, because if that hadn't worked, the movie wouldn't work. If we, the audience, didn't buy that Asher Angel and Zachary Levi were playing the same character, then the movie fails. 
Luckily, the transition from young Billy to adult Billy was performed with flying colors. So sure, the heroes are great, the acting is fantastic, and the dialogue is hilarious, but what about the villains? Dr. Savannah was by far the biggest surprise for me in this movie. The trio is made him out to be just another villain most people would just forget along the lines of Ronin, Yellow Jacket, or Red Skull. These are memorably boring supervillains. But Savannah doesn't fall into this trap. The screenwriters managed to make a sympathetic villain who serves as a foil to Billy. Savannah was someone who always wanted a parental love, but never got it, driving him to seek out the power he was rejected many years ago to get revenge on his father. Whereas Billy has been given parental love, however he always runs away from it. But in the end, Billy comes out stronger because he has the love and support of his family, something that Savannah was rejected. It's really quite tragic when you look at it from an outside perspective. Billy and the gang never knew Savannah's backstory, but we do. And when we see that family is what makes Billy more powerful, it's really sad because Savannah was never given that choice. He was always abused by his father, and never given the love that he deserved. It's really tragic. Shazam isn't about why Billy becomes a hero. It doesn't try to explain the mysticalness of his power like Doctor Strange does. It simply establishes that Billy now has these powers, and instead follows the events that make Billy worthy of these powers, and make him into a hero. The movie understands that with great power comes great responsibility, because just like Spider-Man, getting the powers doesn't just make Billy a hero. I think that part of the charm of teen heroes is that teens are typically more flawed individuals than adults because they're not fully matured. This same principle applies to Billy Batson. He's a largely flawed individual who doesn't start the movie with the best intentions. He pushes away people who offer to care for him and love him just to find a mother who abandoned him in the first place. And what finally makes Billy a superhero, makes him truly pure of heart, is his family who he finally accepts. Billy's character arc is learning what it means to open your heart and let the ones you love in. This is literally represented by Billy sharing his power with the rest of his family. The movie would have fallen apart if when Billy was given the power all these flaws were just thrown out. Instead, they made them even more prominent by making Shazam a selfish asshole who skips school, robs ATMs, and charges people for pictures. He pushes Freddy away even more. If anything, the powers of Shazam brought out Billy's insecurities and flaws while enabling him to make bad decisions because he isn't restricted by being a child. Just like Spider-Man, Billy needs an Uncle Ben moment. And I think that this moment is when he finally meets his mother. I don't know if this was just me, but the scene with Billy running away gave me vibes very reminiscent of instant family. Anyways, when Billy's mother finally tells him that she abandoned him because she was only 17 and didn't think she could raise a child, that's when Billy truly becomes a superhero. He realizes that he has a loving family that he can go to that will make him stronger. This is a coming of age of a superhero, learning what it means to be a hero. This is a rarity among the recent DCEU movies we've been seeing, because for some reason directors and executives think that the human part of superheroes are bad, that they shouldn't be shown. So they dehumanize Superman and they make Batman a killer, when what we really want to see is what makes these gods want to protect us, what makes the man into the hero. And that is what Shazam does. It shows us what it truly means to be a hero. Shazam shines in the human scenes. The word Shazam wasn't even spoken until what felt like a third of the movie. Because Shazam takes its time building Billy Batson, building Freddie Freeman, building Dr. Savannah as a villain, and building a likable foster family consisting of eight individual personalities, including Rosa and Victor. The scenes right after Billy gets these powers and he goes to a convenience store to buy beer and Billy and Freddy make videos about Shazam's powers. Just two 15 year olds being 15 year olds. Everything about these scenes is so sincere and genuine. I'm 15, and I saw a lot of myself in these scenes, and that's the true magic of Shazam. Because you see your younger self in these kids, and it makes you go back to when you were 15. You feel the childlike sense of wonder that these two boys feel. You feel the goofiness, the heartbreak, the conflict, and the love. The movie shines brightest when it's just two 15 year old boys. Please, please go see this movie so that we can get more DC movies like this. More about family. Movies that don't make characters dark and edgy. Let more directors like David F. Sandberg direct these movies. Let more writers like Henry Gaiden write these movies. Please, go see this special movie. Shazam is the best DC movie because it doesn't need to be dark. It can be cheesy like the Raimi trilogies and it can be full of heart like the 1978 Christopher Reeve Superman. This movie perfectly understands that we don't go to see these movies for the CGI action scenes. We go to see them for the people. Shazam is all about people. Shazam is about being accepted and loved. Shazam is about rising above your circumstances to become a hero. 
Shazam isn't just about saying the magic word. It's about what it means to say Shazam. What is it you value so much about the League? Golly, I guess it's all the good they do. Not just helping people, which is great. I mean, that's the reason we're all here in the first place, right? But they really make a difference. They change the world.